We've got 30 laps to go. 30 laps to get it done, 30 laps to make it, 30 laps to not make it. And the fastest car on the racetrack the last two laps has been Kenzer. Now here's Jeff Burton battling our pole sitter, 77 Dave Blaney. This is for 11th place. Jimmy Johnson is part of that battle as well. You know, it's, it, to me, one of the most phenomenal things is Kurt Busch. I mean, all of a sudden, the latter part of last year, uh, the kid just started winning races. And uh, then he starts this year off. He finishes second at Daytona. Here he is up front leading this race and a good shot of winning this one. I don't think there's any stopping this kid. And you know, I talked to Jimmy Finney, his crew chief. They were definitely one of the teams that didn't want to see the 2002 season ends. One of the biggest fear was the new body change. Jimmy was concerned. Could they get it going as good as they had the old body? Looks like to me they've done it. They've accomplished it. Yeah, and the, and the Ford and the Dodge got such a minor change, Larry. I mean, they really just got the kick out on the nose. They just built it into the nose instead of adding it on like they were doing at the end of last year. You saw Dave Blaney move past Jeff Burton. That's for 11th place. Ryan Newman is going to join that battle from 11th on back. Four cars now fighting for that spot. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson in 48 went by Jeff Burton as well. And uh, I talked to Chad Canals about several things this morning, and they really were wanting to redeem themselves. This was a racetrack that fought them last year. They had a good run in the fall, had the loose wheel, and shook the hub loose. They had to go behind the wall for major repairs. Johnson currently 12th. Jeff Burton falls into the clutches of Ryan Newman. And right behind them, Elliot Sadler, who had that penalty for the tire rolling out onto pit road, has climbed back up to 15th and continues to march forward. Definitely, no matter what happens, Elliot Sadler has passed more race cars here today than anybody when you figure the repair on the nose and then having to go to the rear of the field for the wheel rolling out on pit road. And as I mentioned earlier, he, Leo Jarrett is running this, the setup that Sadler and them came down here and developed on the test. Uh, Brad Parrott said, you know, Dale didn't run all that great here last time, so we're just going to throw that at it and see how he likes it and learn something. Learn if uh, Dale Jarrett and Elliot Sadler can run the same setup. So I think they've learned a lot today. Now Jimmy Spencer moving into view, battling with outside pole sitter Johnny Benson and Jeff Green. That would be 18th, 19th, and 20th. Looking back from Benson, it's Valvoline. Pontiac. Just like Mike, we used to run 500 miles here. The fall of 1995, they cut it 100 miles off of it, back to 400 miles. So, uh, but we used to run 500 miles here. You had to pack your lunch, buddy. All clear. Back up front, Dale Jarrett, who in a five-year period from 1996 to 2000, had six second place finishes here and one win and no finishes worse than seventh. That group always had this place figured out from the very beginning. Got the 45 behind you on Fred tires. And for so long here, you had to start up front. If you didn't start up front here, you weren't really considered a contender. Now they start, you know, 37, 38 and, and, and are factors in the race. But I tell you, you heard Dale Jarrett's spotter tell him about Kyle Petty and the 45 for fresh tires. Of course, you see Kyle right there just drive by him. It's so important for that spotter. It's one of the most valuable jobs he plays here, Rosie plays here, is letting you know about a car coming with fresh tires because they will run over you. And that's the thing you always tell the spotter. Tell me things I don't know. Don't tell me things that I, I, I know. Tell me things I can't see. Yeah, two of the fastest cars on the track right now are Robbie Gordon and Kyle Petty because they've both just been in the pits. Uh, Kyle served a 15 second penalty for a tire that rolled out of his pit box. Larry Foyt making his last stop of the day. Only four cars in the garage. Marlon Mayfield, Todd Bodine, and Derek Cope. Which is pretty typical Rockingham. You have a lot of cautions. You just don't end up with a lot of attrition. People fix their cars and come back out. I think right now, if you're leading the race or up there in the first two or three, you just don't want to beat, don't beat yourself. Just drive a smart race and don't do anything to beat yourself. Kyle Petty and Steve Park just got together in front of Kurt Busch. An anxious moment for the race leader. Yeah, well, Kyle's Kyle got those new tires. You run up on somebody and, and, you know, the guy's trying to get out of your way and first thing you know, you run into him. Kyle, the leader lapping outside. Jerry Nadeau. The closing rate on new tires, the old tires, is almost 10 mile an hour. So you really run up on a guy in a hurry, and he doesn't know which way to go. Let's see what happened here. Going off into Ooh. turn three. And I mean, right there in front of our leader. 
Kurt was going as high as he could, but he was about to run out of racetrack. And Kyle couldn't go low. There was a car on the apron looking to pit. <laughs> Remember we were saying the safest place on the track was way out in front. <laughs> there is no safe place. Ward Burton, Ricky Rudd, Dave Blaney, and Elliot Sadler. Now they're all battling for 10th place. And then you throw that 74 car up in the middle of the day. He's got fresh tires. Kind of muddies up the water when he gets up in there mixing it up with the guys that are racing each other. Yeah, because he's seven laps down. Yeah, but they'll just let him go on by oh, on boy. the bottom. <laughs> Elliot Sadler in that 38, he's getting everything he can get out of that piece right now as we have about 18 laps to go. Well, he and little Raymond, Ray Fox, uh, the third there, they've done a good job today. They did their homework. They came and tested. They gave their teammate a good setup. They, they should be proud of what they've accomplished this weekend. And the two drivers who dominated this race, Mark Martin is 12 seconds off the lead in seventh. And Rusty Wallace, 15 seconds off the lead in eighth. And I think in Mark's case, it's not a case of where they over-adjusted. We heard our guys talking. They were not making a lot of adjustments, but I just think the racetrack went away from them. It changed. Yeah, Mark is just really, really, I can't believe how slow he's going. He's just hugging the bottom. Looks like the car has really picked up a bad push. 15th place race. And look who Kurt Busch has caught. Jimmy Spencer moves aside, running in 19th position. Oh boy, Kurt has to really work to get under him. Trust me, there, he's gonna have to work real hard. And you see Dale Jarrett, he's pulled right up there with him. And Greg Biffle behind him in the 16, he has fresh tires. Here Dale waiting on him, waiting on him. Here the tires try to spin. Clear high, Jarrett, car behind you, friend, Try tires to get back in the gas and you Looking just can't. Low, you can't get that rear grip. There you see Biffle in the 16 with those fresh tires. What drives you crazy here is the tires where you lose the front going in and you lose the rear coming off. And you just, it's so frustrating. And it's, you know, it's its aggravating. You know, it's, oh. it, it's, it just drives you crazy, but these guys own fresh tires and you're out there sliding around and you can't run where you want to run. Kurt Busch exercising patience. Meanwhile, at 10th place, Ricky Rudd, Ward Burton, and Elliot Sadler continue to battle. I tell you, we've seen some great finishes here, guys. You know, cars coming down here, come off turn four, one high, one low. Saw uh, Steve Park and Bobby Labonte have a whale of a finish here a couple of years ago. Steve Burns. Mike Matt has just radioed his pits and said, guys, be ready. I think I may have a flat tire. All of a sudden, guys in the pits here got very busy. He said, I may have a flat tire. And then what happens is when the tires wear out, you think they're flat. I mean, they feel like they're flat because they lose all their grip. And I just look at his last lap time. It don't look like he's off what the leader just ran. Jeff Hammond. You don't believe that our, our leader right now has been driving hard, watching him go up here two laps ago. This is what he did coming off of four. He kisses the wall right there off of four. That's how hard he's up on the wheel right now and how loose that race car is getting. Jeff, he knows there's only about 12 laps to go, 11 laps to go now. So he knows with DJ right in his rear view mirror, he's got to get all he can. Right now, he wishes Dale Jarrett was driving the big brown truck. He might be able to get away from that. Going to put a lap on Mike Skinner. And Dale Jarrett right now, he's loving this. He knows this guy is really watching his rearview mirror and driving awful hard. He's putting a lot of pressure on him. And they are Jarrett. in a, a gaggle of cars, a gaggle of lap cars. They're almost side by side, though, here with 10 laps to go. And this, Dale's got the position going down into turn one. Heavy traffic ahead. Jarrett has to put two wheels on the apron. This could be ugly. And look just ahead of him. That was ugly. Tons of traffic. Oh, oh, they oh. touch it. Got Kurt Busch out of Kurt's shape. trying to squeeze clear in between high, high. Jared and, uh, and Gordon. Clear Couldn't high, do it. Jared high. would have no part of that. He used a 24 for a pick. First time Dale Jarrett has led today. Clear. 18 to car on pit road. Speed, smooth, take care of it. Bobby Labonte pits for fuel. That makes me wonder who else is going to be short on fuel. It's going to be mighty close. Nine to go. Dick Bergman. Bobby Labonte coming down pit road for fuel. They weren't too sure if he was going to make it or not. They, Bobby wanted tires, but his crew chief, Fat Backley Swain, has just said negative. I can't take the time. Jim Gilbert with the gas can. Quick, one, two, three, and he's out of here. But look at the race traffic that Dale Jarrett has to contend with and a bumper full of Kurt Busch. Boy, and Kurt Busch has turned his car every way but loose. 
And all these guys are fighting to stay on the lead lap. They're doing what they have to do. Three more laps. Kurt's getting a little annoyed. I think they're getting a little annoyed with Jeff Gordon up in there, but Jeff's just trying to stay on the lead lap. But now he's uh, been lapped by Dale Jarrett. He needs to let Kurt Busch go on. And look how far Dale Jarrett and 88 is driving away from Kurt Busch right now. But boy, Kurt got a good run off turn four down the front stretch, but right there, that seems like that's where Dale beats him so bad. Kurt's just not getting off the corner. Yeah, he's loose. See him back, see him back in, jump out. Saying Matt Kenseth is coming, and Matt Kenseth is within a second of Kurt Busch. He is coming in a hurry. It wasn't that long. He was, was about three or four seconds yeah, behind these guys. He can't make it. He's got too much traffic. Everybody in front of him just had to move out of his way, and that ain't going to happen. Five laps to go next time by for Dale Jarrett. Trying to notch his second Rockingham victory. He has a ton of top fives here. More traffic. You got two cars running side by side here, the 99 and the 10. And one, one of them is Kurt Busch and Matt Kenseth's teammate. And those two, they're fighting for 12th place, Daryl, so they can't give way. The spoiler is the 31 car. He's got tires on here. He comes now. He's going to get up in there and get in the way. Oh, boy. Jeff Green, a quick pit stop for fuel. Oh, she's getting my heart rate's picked up, boys. Oh, boy. Robbie Gordon underneath all the leaders scoops through. Jarrett blockaded. Drops to the bottom. And here comes Kurt on the outside. And Jack Sprague with fresh tires gets through. And there, Kurt's going to get the lead back. Yes, he is. Jack Sprague held up Dale Jarrett just enough that Kurt Busch gets back by. And the 99, his teammate moved out of his way to give him room. Sprague was faster on fresh tires. Dale Jarrett's a little quicker than Kurt Busch. I don't know if he can get back around him or not. Oh, loose is a little up. bit loose right there. Here they come to the line. Three laps to go. This time, side by side. Dale Jarrett's got in position. He should have the best line down low. Forces uh, Bush up a little bit. Got to stay off of him as they exit this turn. Kurt's been loose off of there. They don't have a whole lot of lap traffic to contend with now. They'll be coming to two to go. Now, here's where Bush has been good on the high side. Takes him high, pushes him up, tries to come in front of him, does. Still there, clear high, clear tries high. To, tries to Bunch. put the slide. Tries to put the, he did put the slide job on. He tried to cut back under him. Now we got a lap car in the way again. Larry Foyt going past on fresher tires. A lap and a half. What either one of those guys to get for just half of a set of tires. You know, Bush cut under Jarrett, but with Foyt there, there was no clean air to hold Bush's car down to the racetrack. Yeah, Kurt's car just got too loose up off the corner, and Dale's car actually looks pretty good up yeah. off the corner. Dale Jarrett went to the high side. White, white flag, flag this time. Yeah, Clear he's got a little white flag. Matt Kenseth closing. Boy, one to go. Kenseth has come from way back. If he hadn't had to work through traffic, I think he would probably got the best car, but run out of time. No lap cars to contend with, just look right up to the top of the racetrack, off turn four, final time. And Dale Jarrett gets his 31st career Winston Cup victory, beating Kurt Busch by half a second. Great race. And Brad Parrott gets his first Winston Cup win as a crew chief. Won a lot of races as a crew chief for a Busch team. Jeff Burt, but he gets his first win. And trust me, Buddy Parrott, Todd Parrott are proud of Brad Parrott. What's that feel like, uh, Larry, to win your first race? I know what it feels like as a driver, but as a crew chief. It's a wonderful feeling. You've done your it job. It takes you a while to realize it, I think. Yeah. You've done your job in Kurt Busch's last seven races. Three wins, two seconds, a third, and a sixth. Wow. And he will have the Winston Cup points leaving lead, lead here.